Hey guys, so welcome back to New Digs, and we are here in my kitchen in the northwest corner. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, creating indoor gardens, terrariums, and these things go through levels of popularity. Um, I know in the 70s it was all the rage, mm -hmm. but like everything from the 70s, um, including fashion, they are coming back. Mm -hmm. And just a fun little project to, to do now, and it's something you know that just brightens up your, your winter household a little bit. Right, it's, you know, and like I said, it's something you can do now that you exactly. can, can't be outside. Exactly. And, and there's, I think there's sort of a terrarium for, for everybody. Yeah. You know, it could be, it could be, you know, you could do something very chic and modern and, and, and yep. a more modern shape container. Or you could do something that's more like a, a bell cloche. I've got this like little yeah. little mini greenhouse I've had forever and it's just been sitting empty since we moved. And I think it's about time we yeah. change that up. So yep. you know, I mean I've got a little little I mini aquarium kind of thing here. And it's just beautiful that that way. Yeah, so the container, I mean, the only issue, and you could do, you could do a terrarium in something like this, in a bell jar, but you just have to be able to get your hand in there. And so know that if you have something that's narrow at the top and widens out at the bottom, you can use that, but you just thought you're going to have to use something to be able to uh -huh. manipulate the material down at the bottom. So, okay. you know, just about anything will work, but just know that in order to get in there and mess with the plants down the line, um, the top you know, needs to be accessible. Right, and in this case, this whole thing comes off, so right. So it's that's also easier to to, to mess. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's a myth that terrariums, you know, you, you plant them and then there's just no maintenance, and you're good, to, and that's not true. And I was actually just talking to my friend Jackie um, from Riverside, who the florist, but she's also a houseplant aficionado, and I was saying to her, you know, tell me what you know about terrariums, and she said people think that it's a one-shot deal and it's done and she said it's not and things die in there and you should expect it and you have to replace things so it's really it's it's not a you know just sort of a, a fail proof it's low maintenance it is low maintenance for sure i think my problem is i had mine i planted it up and i just i never gave it any more nutrients and it used up the food right you can't put a huge amount of soil that's on right it, so it used it up yeah yeah, that can happen, and it can also be plant selection based. Um, some things okay. don't want that much that much humidity. So, for in a, a terrarium, we're generally thinking about more jungly, you know, foliage type plants. Mm -hmm. Cacti and succulents don't do great in this situation because it's just too humid, and they're gonna rot. And you need drainage. And you need drainage. And mo most of these are a no drainage exactly. situation. Perfect. Exactly. So these don't have these. This is a closed bowl. Like you, this is a fish bowl. You have water in it. Um, so yes, there's no drainage, and it's basically um, creating a closed system where it's almost like a rainforest, where the, the water that you put in oh. is recirculating. And you can actually tell about moisture levels just by looking, we'll talk about this one in a second, because you'll see condensation um, right. on the inside. And if it's too much condensation, um, you'll be able to tell because the plants will look yellowy, they'll look like they're, they're not doing well. Okay. So, you know, you can kind of monitor it. And basically, you're only going to water these if it's a closed system like this. The more open the top, the more you're going to have to water. Okay. Right? But um, if it is, you know, sort of a closed system, once every couple of weeks, if that. Um, I, I don't think I've watered this at all. And it's been in place for probably, gosh, five, six weeks now. Um, and this okay. does have drain. It has little teeny drainage holes on the top, but that's it. So breathing holes. Right, yeah, breathing holes. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll get started, and I'll show you. So we've talked about some of the containers, okay. and we'll talk about kind of plant selection, and then laying it out. And what I am bringing to the table today um, is a shout out. This is a shout out to my childhood. Um, I was in 4-H. And I once did a presentation at my county fair on how to build a terrarium. And I had, I had poster boards. Reliving I, what it, it is. So I'm very, you know, but I have to admit, I did not remember everything that I knew when I was 13 or 14. So I did have to do a little research. But I, you know, I do bring that depth of knowledge. Right. Right. <laughs> To the table. Oh, I'm excited to, to hear what you have to say because what I did before was fairly quick and dirty. I know there's more to it. Not really, but well, I'll show you. So let's start out with a little bit of, of history. And Jill is an incredible buff on 19th century um, design and gardening and all kinds of things. And 
So when I was doing some research about this, I learned that um, terraria were initially kind of associated with the Victorians. Right. I mean, this, especially this type. Right. This this type is it's, this is a version of a low budget version of something called a warding case. W a r d named after a guy Ward. Yes. And he was a Victorian plant collector, and they would go off on these ex expeditions mm -hmm. to faraway lands, and they, he had trouble keeping his plants samples alive um, on the journey on the back. Journey that back. Makes sense, right? So he made these these cases with glass and and wood that would sort of help protect them on the sea voyages back to England. So a wording case was the first terrarium basically so and i think i read somewhere that this ward um, that you're talking about published a book in 1843 and it was sort of a, a how-to book about creating and keeping terrarium i'm not surprised but yeah that makes sense i'm not surprised and i always wanted a victorian warding case and this was ah, i love this, this was my you know bargain version of it that i picked up at the connecticut yeah. power show some years ago so it's gorgeous so that's a little history, you know, but the idea is that you're creating a little, a mini landscape um, inside a box, yes, you know, or inside a container. And so you can even do landscaping in there. You can create little hills and, and dales and valleys and, and all that. Your, you know, your imagination is really the only limit. Right. I mean, um, you know, I, I put little silly things like little yeah. mini wheelbarrows and things in it, and that's just me being silly. But um I actually, and I was going to surprise you with this, but I saw online this bag of little tiny plastic pink flamingos. I think they're meant to go on a cake, like a birthday cake. Oh, funny. And I was like, I was looking, I wanted to get them and they were sold out, but I just thought it would be hilarious to have this really elegant terrarium with like this giant flock of plastic pink flamingos. Oh, what a hoot. Wouldn't that have been great? Yeah. So if I can get those, that, that could still be a thing. We yes. Just, we could still do that. Yeah. I um, have a little mini garden gnome somewhere and I just couldn't find them. That could work as well. That could, you know, it, you just never know what you're going to find. But yeah, little, you know, little tchotchkes um, in there can be really cute. But just think about designing a landscape. So because this is going to be, again, sort of almost an eco ecosystem. Yeah. Um, when you say, you know, that it's a little more complicated than just planting the plants, it doesn't have to be. Um, for example, this um, cloche here, this has a pitcher plant in it, which is a carnivorous plant. Um, it actually has this little uh, protrusion that has digestive enzymes in it so that it, it, it draws insects to it and then breaks them down. So it's a carnivorous plant, but they love moisture, which makes sense, right? Because insects thrive in moisture. So that's why this has been so happy in there. But all this is, is just some soil and moss over top. I didn't do all the layers that, you know, we're going to talk about today. Okay. Um, so the layers essentially are some gravel, some charcoal. And when we say charcoal, this is simply the kind that you would get for an aquarium. Um, you can also buy it, you know, online. Um, they sell it, but it'll say for, you know, especially for terrariums. The reason that you want to use um, the charcoal is that A, it, it holds water. But B, it also will, um, it acts on this as a filter and it will kill, um, it controls odors. It will kill bacteria, fungi, things like that. So it basically keeps it fresh, keeps the ecosystem okay. fresh. And then on top, the top layer, um, you can use this, um, this is sort of like a horticultural moss that you can buy in um, you know, places like Michael's Craft Stores, also garden centers sell it. This also, it comes dry, but I've been soaking it. Um, here just to get it wet. And so when we put this whole thing together, we probably are barely going to water it because we're going to just spritz inside and then we're going to have this moistened um, moss. Some people use more than one layer of moss. So this dresses it up, but also acts like a mulch too. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now some people do a layer of gravel in the bottom, mm -hmm. then the layer of charcoal, then they put a layer of the moss down before the soil so that the soil doesn't, it's less likely to, to kind of sift down into the substrate. That makes sense. Right. But if you don't have too much of it, you don't have to do that. Um, and you know, you just don't worry too much about the soil doing that. And especially in a, in a container like this, where you, you know, you're not going to see the very lowest level and you kind of you know, forget, but it's really the gravel is for drainage. The charcoal is, is for um, freshness, again, freshness. Yep. And uh, controlling bacteria and things like that. 
and then the finish. soil goes on top. And this is just this uh, is just plain old potting soil. This okay. is you know coast of Maine organic uh, potting soil, which of course we love. You can use anything. I would not advise using um, something that has food already in it. So I think it's better to just use something so that you're really controlling um, when you feed. And in a terrarium, you really only want to feed a couple of times a year. It's a you know it can be a fairly delicate system because the food can't you drain want, out. You don't want to encourage a lot of, of heavy growth, or else right. the plants will outgrow the space. Exactly. That's that's an issue. And so one issue with maintenance that we'll talk about is as the plants grow, you may have to you know prune them or pinch them back a little bit just to keep them in size and from overshadowing something near it that's that's not getting as large. Well, should we talk about plant yeah. selection then because yep. I, I brought a few plants over and maybe they were not appropriate. Yeah, no, these are perfect. Um, we're talking mainly foliage plants again, so we don't want to be using cactus. Um, and things like, you know, if you have a little tiny orchid, those can thrive beautifully in here. Ferns do great. This is, um, this is a begonia. They, they're, they're good. The only issue is that begonias like to dry out uh, in between waterings. So this situation may be a little bit too moist, consistently so, so moist. So maybe I save this for something else. Maybe. I, that would be my only worry okay. um, with it. But here, I've got a little sample. And these are, I guess this is a three-inch pot. Uh, this little fern is perfect. This is a button fern. That's going to be brilliant. Okay. That's perfect. You can also often find these little two-inch pots. And these are great because I know. See. Yeah, this is an Aralia, A-R-A-L-I-A. And it's variegated. You can see how sweet it is. This is another type of fern, and it doesn't look like it. Um, you can see that the leaves are, are much broader, but usually this, ferns have much more complex exactly. um, foliage. That's right. But yeah, these are ferns, so that's going to be good. I have two of those. This is a Fitonia, F-I-T-T-O-N-I-A, and look how beautiful that oh, is. This is a little red. Jazzy. It is jazzy, yeah. This might even flower for you in there. Um, this is a Peperomia, not to be confused with Peperoni. Um, Peperomia. There are a million different Peperomia, Peperomias, and they're all great. In fact, in my 4-H um, terrarium, I remember having a Peperomia. So, but this is a weird looking one to me. This is a fairly waxy leaf, um, but this is going to do great. Oh, they give it a little bit of a tropical feel. Yeah, there, I think. and I like variegation too. You know, the, the, the fact that it's, the leaf is not one color. Variegation just means it's got some, you know, um, two color, bi color. And then finally, um, this is a real, this you'd see in a Victorian terrarium, 100%. This is, um, I think it's called a parlor, parlor palm. It's a little mini It's palm. a tiny little palm. <laughs> yeah. So, but this is going to, you know, it's going to get big. And you notice how we have different kinds of foliage. So this one is strappy. This has, the fur has little buttons. This one is coarser. And that texture is something you really want to go for. Um, again, creating your own little universe in there. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, you rock. I know. I was able to explore a bunch of things. And typically, you know, nurseries will almost always carry these. Sometimes you can even find the little tiny guys in the grocery store. Um, so, you know, if you see them and if something in your terrarium is, is not thriving, you know, it's easy to, to pick up another one. Wow. To replace it with. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so start with we go. removing the lid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Removing your lid, step one. Okay, so I'm going to put, this is gravel. You can use fish tank gravel. You can use, you said you had just used like gravel that, from had, a driveway. Yeah, I, had, I had, yeah, I gravel from my drainage yep. dish. I'm just going to dump it in there. Gravel is in and I've added um, a little bit of this um, fish tank gravel that you brought. And now I'm going to add the charcoal. This is the horticultural charcoal, they call it. But like I said, uh, anything you buy in a pet store for fish tanks, perfectly fine. And we're just and getting- how much do you put in that? If, you know, nobody really measures it. I would say equal layers of these two, and they don't have to be super thick, you know, just, just a little bit. I just, this is a fairly large container and I didn't have as much. Yeah, we have two inches to play with, but you want to leave some room for the plants and the soil. So. Right. So we're just going to go ahead and put the, um, put the soil in. And you can tell this is a bag that I have opened um, because it is, it is ripped. This is how yeah, I open it, cookie it, packages. It, it, it looks like wild animals <laughs> draw to it. Okay. <laughs> just 
Um, among my friends, you know, something they know about me, I just, I get hangry, I get, and I gotta get the cookie package open, and, and apparently I was feeling the same way about the soil. So in it goes. Here's my first question. So is the terrarium gonna be seen from one, one direction? In other words, usually that's the case, right? Like it'll be sitting on a table and you're looking at it from the front. And the reason I ask that is because you're gonna put, in that case, taller stuff in the back. Yes, it is going to be seen more from one side than the other because there's a window behind Perfect. the that you're putting in. Perfect. Oh, and actually, thank you for bringing that up. As far as light for these things, um, especially with one like yours that's, that's pretty well encased, you don't want it in a hot, 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 hot window because it can overheat. Right. So you want it to be, you, know, you want lots of indirect, lots, lots bright of light. indirect. That's where it's going to be. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if, but if you put it like, you know, in a, in a really hot sunroom kind of window, you'll see things starting to cook in there. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do this. Put this guy back here. So this is the back. Course. Yes. It's always a good idea. So you, this is your design project. So I'm going to let you arrange. Oh goodness. I mean, how big is this going to be? That can get a decent size. So I probably would put that in the back. I think that's probably good. Perfect. You know? <laughs> okay, All right. So we'll start out with plugging the big things. I would. Yep. Yep. So you can stick that in. And with something that size, like the larger um, three-inch size, you may have to pull some soil off the bottom. Mm -hmm. These should be. You're, you're okay. better at being brutal. Oh my God! Anyway. You're right. You're right. I'm, I'm a big coward <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. She's just. Yeah, I just read it. Yeah. That's true. And that we are going to have to add a little more soil around it because it's it's um right. it's a little too tall. Mm. And with these, you know, typically because these are little teeny babies, they're not going to be super root bound. They should just pop out. Um, a note though, when you have containers this small, I bought these a few days ago, and I've had them sitting in a little um, container uh, of water, or at least I soak them. Um, every so often because these dry up really, really quickly. So you want to make sure. Oh, we're just a little because it's going to be Yeah. Oh, look, there's here. This is great. See how that just fell apart? Oh, so you've got bonus three you, points you got for three. one. That's right. So that can happen. And I love that. So now oh, we that's, can. That's, that's nice. better. That's better. I'm going to put your wheelbarrow in there. And it's over here. So now we just fill in with a little yep. extra soil. Yeah, and you do to the extent, you know, just like you would do if you were planting, you want to kind of get these as much um, uh, contact with, you know, the soil as possible. So you do want to kind of push them in. And yeah, we'll just grab some more soil. Now, I would think this would be enough because yes. it's, you know, you gotta they're going to grow. They're plants. I mean. Exactly. Exactly. All right, and then we'll take our, our um, moss which as I said, I, I pre-moistened. This was bone dry and I just soaked it in the water and it just soaked it up. This particular one has been, um, has dye on it. You could also use ones that are, are more natural looking. There's like Spanish moss kinds of things. If you want it you know, to look a little more natural, this is what I was able to get. But again, the main reason you're using this is almost like a mulch to keep moisture in it. And also just because it's decorative and it looks a little nicer than, than just the soil. There you go. Oh, wait. And I've got a, oh, your bird bath. I've got a bird bath. I'll put oh, it, that's perfect. Put it over here. Perfect. It's on the insane. I like it. All right. Now, what are we thinking as far as the um, the moss? Now, I can't really see it too well. Can you see if it looks like we're pretty well covered? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. okay. And again, you know, you can always just, we're going to give it all a spritz, and this is just a plain old water. Some people say you, know, you should use distilled water and all that stuff. I mean, that's that's way too complicated. So this is really just, you know, the, uh, the moss is, is retaining a lot of moisture, so that's that's gonna be sufficient for now. And what you're gonna do now is we're gonna cover it and you're gonna watch it. So for like 24 hours, you're gonna leave the cover on, leave it undisturbed, and you're gonna see what the condensation level looks like. If it looks, you know, just normal and you can see through it and there's a little bit of condensation, then you're fine. If it looks like it's just raining in there, like it's really, really wet, it shouldn't be because we didn't water this heavily. Right. Then you know it's too wet and um, you want to take that lid off. You might want to prop. Either prop it open or take the whole thing off okay. for like a day or so just to let it, you know, 
And if I go, and if you look over and you see no condensation, it's probably time to water it. Exactly. And as we said, basically you're going to water this a couple of times a month. Um, you can feed it, you know, just like a couple of times a year. We do tend to use um, fish and seaweed. Yeah. Although on house plants it can be a little, a little stinky when you, yeah. first, when you first put it down. So but really food is not a big issue. And that's why these are good for a beginning gardener because they really are pretty self-sufficient. So we'll see yeah, this. See what it looks like. I think it's too person person oh, okay, so. to kind of get yeah. all the little plants in without squishing yeah. them. Okay. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Let me get this out of the way. Oh yeah, any more plants than it would have been too much. Oh, I love it. I do. I do too. Ooh, nice you. work. You're welcome. You're welcome. And when the flamingos come, I will I'll be on the phone. <laughs> I don't know if there's room oh, for there's, them. there's always room for flamingos. Oh, okay. So, well, guys, thank you. And, and I hope um, that this was instructive. And it, it did. It's like, you know, what's that Bruce Springsteen glory days? Yeah. I feel that. I feel, yeah. I feel you're reliving your, your 4 H victory. Yeah. Victory. Thank you. You're very welcome. And we're well, uh, a blue ribbon winner. Tonight. Thank you. Well, guys, thanks again. And uh, we will see you next time on New Digs. And hopefully next time, I think we're going to be talking about seed planting inside maybe sometime yeah. soon. And then hopefully we'll be able to get outside, um, back into the, into get our hands dirty outside. We're having a big melt today. So yes. Yeah. Right now it's, it's mud season here. It's, it's warmish outside. We know we're going to get another snap so we're not getting our hopes up but um but very soon we'll be able to get back outside so yeah, see you next time see you next time on new digs bye